No, to be honest with you, I, it, the, the challenge that all of us face is like in everything, there's going to be more than, than uh, just one fuel of choice. I mean, okay. when we looked at our own outcomes as we projected them out over 2050, and I think it's very important to recognize that uh, this IMO requirement that we're all talking about, it's not a ship specific requirement. It is to some extent more of a company requirement because you're talking about managing a portfolio of ships, not just a particular ship to meet this target. And when you look forward, as you kind of project to 2050, as, as we have, quite honestly, you know, you're going to see kind of a, a, a mix of fuels depending upon the type of ship and the trade route and the operational requirements. You, you could conceivably see still, believe it or not, up to 40% being oil-based in terms of fuels, 35% roughly some sort of combination of ammonia and hydrogen, and I'll, I'll get back to that one specifically. About 10 or 15% LNG and about, you know, maybe 10 or 15% biofuel or methanol. So there is no one fuel uh, and it's going to be really a mindset of how to manage a portfolio of ships running on different fuels uh, to collectively meet, meet the target. Uh, right. so when you look at kind a blue of water ship, one. sorry, right. a blue water ship could have a very different fuel source to something running inland up to Absolutely. the waterways and canals Absolutely. and things. But, you know, but, uh, between, I mean, there is between the, uh, let's say, inland waterway, short sea, and blue, and, uh, uh, and blue water, you, you could have different, uh, different um, uh, types of fuels, again, based on location of infrastructure, based on, on all sorts of things, operating profile of the owner. But I think when you take a step back, this is very important, in our own research, as we've seen it, there's basically three kind of what I call pathways, three very clear kind of distinct pathways to get you to decarbonization as you work your way through carbon reduction, carbon neutral, and eventually zero carbon. You have what I call the light gas pathway, which starts with LNG, which we talked about, and eventually over time will basically get to ammonia. You have the, what I call heavy path, heavy gas or alcohol pathway that gets you to hydrogen. And then in the middle swim lane, you've got essentially biofuel or synthetic fuels. So you have three different pathways. Obviously, today, if you had to start today based on what engine technology you have and so forth, you'd probably start with either LNG, LPG, or methanol, or, or biofuel. As you move forward, um, you know, in terms of availability of fuel, you know, this thing will progress. I personally believe ammonia will come, will, will, uh, you'll have a, a greater supply of ammonia coming online before you do hydrogen. And in fact, some of the major engine manufacturers by 2024 will actually have an ammonia engine. Hydrogen is a little bit further out. I actually don't think you're going to have commercial availability of the type of hydrogen you need till at least 2040 and onward. And you have to remember, because of the volumetric content of hydrogen and ammonia, that will, on top of everything else, require a whole different type of ship design going forward. So you can see different mindsets, multidimensional thinking. That's going to be the challenge for the industry, how to look at all these things versus uh, kind of the current, more linear process we have right now. 